Hello there, I'm Lauren with Bold Notion Quilting and welcome to Free Motion Monday. So normally I'm doing these Free Motion Monday tips on my long arm machine, but I've got a nice bed quilt on there right now, so I can't take it off to do any of our Free Motion tips. So today I thought it would be fun to do some Free Motion Monday tips on uh, sewing at home on your domestic machines. I'm a Free Motion Quilting instructor and I teach at my local quilt shops as well as on my webpage, boldnotionquilting.com. And I've got a couple different classes on there available for you to watch if you're interested in learning some more about free motion quilting. And I was recently on a hiatus from teaching because it was winter break and my kids were out of school and I can't film or do anything when my kids are home. So going back kind of with a fresh set of eyes, not having taught for a couple months, um, I realized that when I was in class, the ladies were asking me all the same questions that um, they ask in all of, my, all of my classes. So I thought that by putting this video out there, uh, if we share it to our uh, quilting groups and our Facebook pages, that maybe we could meet, reach more ladies and um, they can start their quilting journey ahead of the curve, already knowing these things. So the first thing ladies ask me is, what foot do I use, okay? So this is a quilting foot. Okay, it's a, it's a spring-loaded quilting foot. You can get them without the spring on them, depending on the kind of machine that you have. And if you notice, it's got an open toe, and um, it just has enough space for you to see. You cannot quilt on a regular foot because you just don't have the, area, the visual area to see, and it's also harder to kind of visualize your designs. But if you have a foot like this, and you can even get some generic ones, even plastic ones that you can see better through for pretty cheap, this is a ruler foot. And you can use this to free motion quilt as well. So you can kill two birds with one stone and only get one foot to use for both things. The next thing ladies ask me is how do I put my foot on? So I've got this little, and all machines are different. I'm using a Viking Sapphire 835, okay? But mine has a flat side on it, which, a, most of the machines do. Some different machines, I believe, um, maybe Bernina and Foff don't quite have the same mechanism to hold the feet on. You have to buy their particular ones. Um, but for my Viking, you can buy a generic spring action quilting foot and put it on there. So in order to change out your foot, you gotta get your screwdriver, turn your screw to take off your ankle, okay? Your ankle attaches to your foot I like to keep mine together before I put them away so I don't lose one or the other. Don't lose sight of your screw. Go ahead and get that other foot on. So it's got this little hole right in here. I gotta slide that around this shaft. Not all of them are like that. Some of them will probably just slide right on flat, but this one has to get slid on. And then if you'll notice, there's a little bar right here for the spring action. And then there's a little bar right here that um, is holding your needle in. That little, that big screw that's holding your needle in is where this bar is gonna rest on top. And what's gonna happen when you sew is as it goes up and down, it pulls that spring up. Okay, I've got it gently in there. I'm gonna turn that screw nice and tight so that it's good to go. So now my spring action foot is loaded. Um, it's the same thing if you were using the ruler foot because that just has the little slot on the side and you unscrew the screw, slide it on and screw the screw in so that you can then begin using this. So now that you've got your foot on, you want to um, get ready for the process of quilting. So. You can see here, I've got a large quilting base, okay? That's something that um, I would recommend if you're quilting, if your machine can sit down into a table, that would be helpful as well. And I know a lot of ladies are like, it's hard to move the fabric, what do I do? You can actually get something called silicone spray, okay? and you it's a dry spray, so it's okay to spray around your machine. Um, it's 
flammable and you can't swallow it. So do it in a well ventilated area and you're just gonna spray it along the base of your quilting surface. It's gonna get on my cord for my microphone here, but that's okay. Then you wanna take, just like your wax in your car, you wanna take a spare piece of fabric and you wanna buff that in. And what the silicone spray does is it makes your table smooth, like you're skating on ice. And I kind of just rub it in everywhere. You notice I didn't spray a lot around my machine uh, where my feed dogs are, just because I like to err on the side of caution. I know it's a dry spray and it's safe, but you get enough excess of the other stuff that you spray on your table that you can kind of just wipe it all around there, not have to worry about that. So that's nice and smooth. I can already feel less friction now. The next thing that ladies ask me when we do silicone spray is, is that on there forever? Do I have to reapply it? It does come off um, over time. It's not anything that's gonna stain your quilts, but you will have to reapply it from time to time um, on your surface to make sure that it stays super slick. You can also, if you're a long arm quilter, spray this onto your ruler base to um, minimize the drag that you have from your ruler base. All right, so before we begin free motion quilting, we need to set up our machine um, for free motion. We've already put on our foot, our needle is in there nice, but we need to go ahead and thread our machine. Now, I have trouble threading my machine with the dots on my gloves, so I'm gonna pull those off real quick, okay? I'm gonna go through and I'm going to thread my machine. So I've got my spool of thread on there, okay? Now the rule generally is if your thread has um, straight lines like this, if it's spun on there with straight lines, you can put it horizontal. If not, you can put it on there vertical. Um, these are diagonal lines, so I should put this on vertically, but because I'm so far into my spool, it sometimes can be a pain in the butt for it to come off my thread spool. Or if you're using those cones that don't have a top, those need to be vertical as well which I don't have one readily to show you. So I'm go, gonna go ahead and thread my machine. And this is something that I didn't know, so I really wanna share it with y'all because I felt really dumb. I didn't realize it until I was working at a quilt shop, but once I came around my top hook and I'm coming back down and I'm getting ready to put my thread in my needle, there is this little hook right here that my thread is holding onto. And your thread has to go through that hook for uh, the best possible tension outcome. If it's not in there, you get this big wad of nested fabric on the back. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use my threader. I don't know why it's being a pain today. Probably because I'm trying to film. My thread tail was way too long is the problem too. All right. So we got our thread through there and then our bobbin is all set up and threaded and ready to go. And if you notice, I left a nice long bobbin tail because I don't have one of those fancy machines. So I'm gonna show you guys how to tack down your threads real quick. But before I continue, I wanna show you one more thing. So for varying spools of thread, it does matter how you put the thread on. I don't know if you can see this well, but this spool, a lot of small Guterman type spools, they have these bumpy ridges. And you can actually put your thread on backwards and it'll catch on those ridges as it goes on. So you wanna make sure to put the side with the smooth side onto your spool holder when you're getting your thread on there. So now that you've checked your thread, you've put on your hopping foot, you've checked for lint, you're pretty much ready to go for quilting. You've got your ruler, your not ruler base, but you've got a bigger base set up for your quilting. If you don't have the big acrylic base to set up like this one, um, that's totally fine. You can use what you have for your machine. The so steady table that you can get just can make it a hundred times easier to quilt. Um, and then of course, if you have a table, you can set your machine in. That's wonderful too. Um, the next thing is you want to consider how big the quilt is that you're quilting. Because a big part of quilting um, that can be really hard on the body is having to move and shift and drag the quilt around. Um, so I wanna give you some tips for that. So there are plenty of ladies who will go to a hardware store, they'll buy clamps either like this or the plastic ones. The plastic ones I think have holes um, right here in the handle. You can tie a bungee to it 
screw the bungee into your ceiling and you can clip it on various parts of your quilt top and it can hold up the edges to eliminate the drag, okay? Um, if you don't want to get up there and screw holes in your ceiling and uh, fix bungees to them, you can also go to Target or Walmart and get a rolling like clothing rack. Assemble that. You can roll it up to where you're quilting and have the bungees hold it um, on either side of your table. Um, they can hold up your fabric. And then it's kind of portable and can move with you however you decide to move your um, sewing room around in the future. If neither of those are an option for you, the other thing that you can do that is really great so with your quilt, when you're getting ready to quilt it, pull areas up onto the top. Make sure nothing is tucked under where you're quilting, but just eliminate the drag by creating a lot of slack. Then you kind of quilt with big piles of the fabric around you, and that's going to eliminate a lot of the drag, which is going to be easier on your body and give you smoother quilting designs. All right, so I have my quilting sample ready to go, and this is just scraps of fabric. So when you're practicing, what I recommend is getting something plain, like you see here, to practice on so that you can really see the designs that you're working with. And then I'm gonna be using white thread. So select a contrasting thread so you can really see how well you're working your way around the designs, okay? Your hands can get really dry. So to make it easier to maneuver the fabric around, if you get some quilting gloves, that can really help you. These are just grabberoos. You can, there's all kinds that you can get. It's nice to have the silicone on both sides of the fingertips. Almost all of them are like that. That way when one side wears down, you can switch hands and use the other side and you get twice the life out of your gloves. When you first start quilting, even if you're using scraps, um, I recommend not using the puffier battings. Practice quilting using um, just a natural batting. So this is just a select loft, so it's not super lofty, um, but it's just a regular cotton uh, quilter's dream batting that I use to practice with because it's easier to learn and get down the momentum without having the fluff and puff of maybe a poly puff batting or a wool or anything like that in your way. So when you're trying to get down the, the motion of the designs, use a flatter batting. Now to tack down your threads, what you're gonna need to do is go ahead and get your fabric on there. You got a nice long bobbin tail and you got Nice long thread started for your top thread, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and put my quilting gloves back on to maximize my grip while I'm quilting, which will give me more control over my designs. And then um, if you haven't already, uh, so you've went ahead and you've threaded your top, you've threaded your bottom, you actually need to take your feed dogs down so for me, my feed dogs are right here and I can switch this back and forth. It's got something that looks like little triangles and one that looks flat. And for that, let's see if I can get this closer. For that, it's hard to see because it's white, but I've got a straight line here and I've got triangles here. So those are my teeth saying my feed dogs are up. When I push it that way, my feed dogs go up. When I push it the other way, my feed dogs go down. And they were just set to down, so they're just kind of staying, staying down and with the flow there. Okay. Um, the last thing you need to do is if you have a machine that you have to put into free motion mode, okay, you're gonna come over to your control panel. You're gonna go to your settings and you're gonna scroll down until you see something that says free motion floating. Sometimes it doesn't say anything. What it does is it has a symbol that looks just like this quilting foot. It's just a little C and it's got a curly Q next to it. That is your free motion um, setting, okay? So I'm gonna go in and I can choose from free motion floating or free motion spring action. And we know that I put on a spring action foot, but I'm gonna select floating mode, hit okay, and then hit my settings to go back. So now my machine knows that we're getting ready to free motion quilt in, in floating mode. The reason why I do it in floating mode is because when I tell it to do spring action, I get these long and short stitches because it's trying to anticipate what I'm doing, okay? So let's do some testing with a thread. I've got my machine and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my speed all the way down to begin. 
Okay, and I'm gonna try to quilt. And I'm just gonna see how naturally um, my body wants to quilt. So let's tack off our threads, needle down once, up, slide your fabric, pull up that bobbin thread from the bottom. And what we're doing is basically making sure that we don't have to turn our quilt over and check for any threads. When we're done quilting, we are done quilting, okay? We don't have to go back and tack that stuff down, okay? So I've got a couple stitches in there. The more you do this, the better you get at it. When I first started quilt, um, tacking down my threads, I would have huge knots on the back of my quilt, but now it's as seamless as getting a straight line in there to start quilting. All right, so I'm on the slowest mode and I know I'm a fast quilter, so I'm only doing this to really showcase um, how this works for you guys, okay? Let's see, I wanna make sure I'm as close as possible. I'm gonna go ahead and tack down my threads. I put my needle in once. I move my fabric ever so slightly to create a knot. I get three to five stitches in there and it creates a nice little knot for me and there's no threads or anything on the back that I could potentially quilt into my design or that I'm gonna to have to turn my quilt over and snip. So my machine is on the slowest possible speed setting. When you first start quilting, you have no idea how fast Anything needs to stitch, how fast your hands need to go, how far down your foot needs to go to keep your machine going, and what speed your machine should go on. On top of all of that, you also have to pay attention to the length of your stitches um, and how well those are forming and doing the configuration of your design. So let's see how we can kind of better um, help the learning curve. So I like to start, tell people to start at the slowest possible setting for their machine. Go ahead and quilt. So if I'm quilting, those stitches are pretty long, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna up my speed, okay? There's two ways that I can do this. One, I can move my hands slower and stitch slower with this to make smaller stitches. This is at maximum speed. But do I want to quilt this slow to get my stitches in there? No. The other thing I could do is tell my machine to go faster by upping the speed. Now let's say your speed is all the way up and you're still going too fast with your hands. There's still one more thing you can do to speed your machine up a little bit more. We can take our stitch length down as far as it can go. Okay, And assuming your machine is fine with that, um, your threads don't break, anything like that, you can pedal to the metal and go, okay? Um, aside from that, let's say you're stitching um, and your stitches are just too tiny, okay? First of all, you're never gonna be able to rip those suckers out. <laughs> so I hope you don't need to unsew anything. But if your stitches are too tiny, what you could then do is slow your machine down. And there's two ways to do that, okay? You can take the speed down, if your machine doesn't have a, a speed regulating button on there um, for how fast it can go, then what you can do is up your stitches. Now when I say up your stitches, you can, let's take it over here. My stitch length is at 1.5 right now. I can make my stitches bigger. Okay, so it's gonna be at 3.5. Okay. And I got a good stitch length going there. So, and I'm naturally a fast quilter, so for me, the faster the better. Um, but that's how you can kind of adjust and try to figure out the right stitch length. Now, if you can set your machine to a fixed speed, okay? So this is my speed control setting right here. If I need to go slower, I can take it down to real slow, or I can make it go faster. Um, what I can do is have my machine on a particular speed, put my foot to the floor on my pedal. So I'm gonna do pedal to the metal, and that's gonna keep my machine going at one constant speed. So I'm gonna put my foot to the floor, have my machine on medium speed, and that way I know my machine is going at one constant speed. So then all I have to think about is not how much to push down or pull up my foot on the pedal while I'm sewing, I just have to worry about how fast to move my hands. So. You know, that comes in paying attention to the stitch length and making sure that, that stitch length is one that you want to see. 
once you get a good rhythm going and a good muscle memory and you get a good feel for how fast your body can move, then you're not really paying attention to how fast your hands have to move. You're just focusing on trying to make pretty designs and practice getting those down. Um, so playing with those settings on your machine at the beginning to figure out what's good for you uh, can help you tenfold. So once you figure out your settings, and this is the kicker, write them down somewhere that you won't forget them. That will make a big difference. Um, so that way you don't have to do the process all over again. You can just pull out your notebook and take a look. If you're going too fast or too slow on your machine, I often see quilters get panicked or frustrated. They speed up their needle because um, their hands are going too fast, but then they hear their machine going too fast, so then they speed up their hands. And it's one of those um, games that you play with yourself that you're constantly trying to keep up and slow down with your machine because you can hear it. So if hearing your machine on any kind of machine that you're working with makes you feel like you need to go faster, sometimes it helps to listen to some music while you're stitching and kind of just find a good flow so you're only focusing on the length of those stitches and you're kind of eliminating all the extra noise around you. The next thing is I see ladies overcorrecting. So let's get over here somewhere. And I gotta speed up my machine because I just quilt faster than that. So if we're doing feathers, um, let's say we're doing a feather. People will do the feather and then they don't give themselves time to stop and think. Right, so then weird things happen. Okay, because you hear the machine, you feel like you have to keep going. Instead, maybe what you do is you do the feather Stop, think, all right, I'm gonna go up. Touch, stop and think. Ooh, sorry. Come back, stop, because you know you're gonna do another bump out feather. Bring it around. Now, I'm not saying you're gonna do it this way for the rest of your life, but when you start quilting, it really pays to give yourself a moment to stop and think. The best way you can do that is when you stop with your machine, make sure that your needle is in the down position so that it always stops exactly where you are and you can keep going right away. You don't have to worry about if you move the fabric or anything in the meantime. So lastly, one of the best tips that I can give my students when they come in for class um, is just that you need to practice, okay? Um, when you don't have a designated quilting area, practicing can be pretty difficult. Um, just move this out of the way. So it's best if you set yourself up for success. And what that means is that you're going to buy a panel, and panels are great because they only cost a couple bucks. You could probably find some on clearance that don't cost too much. Um, and you can make yourself a quilt sandwich. And then each day, and the reason why panels are great is because they have different sections. Each day you can plan to quilt just a little different part of that section. Work on the feathers inside this oval or the pebbles or, or the feathers around her. And you can give yourself little sections to accomplish that are gonna take you 10 to 15 minutes to work out. Um, and you'd be surprised how different your quilting will look even if you do the same design every day and just practice it you know a different size in each element um, you'd be surprised how different your quilting looks from sunday when you started to saturday when you finish 10 to 15 minutes a day is great um, and having a panel already quilt sandwiched together and just laying next to your machine sets you up for success because it's as easy as turning your machine on putting the panel under it and starting to quilt all right, so now that I've shown you all the different tips that I have for someone who is quilting on a domestic machine, I just wanna recap. One, silicone spray and gloves can be your best friend. Silicone spray kind of eliminates some of the friction that happens when you're quilting and the gloves can really help you to maintain a good grip on your quilt without having to put too much pressure um, and strain on your body. And then you've also got your quilting table, which is gonna be a huge help to you. You wanna minimize the drag for your quilt top as well. And remember to do that, you can use the clamps all around your quilt top hanging from the ceiling if you've got a great designated space for your sewing. 
If you don't, you can go to Target or Walmart and get one of those rolling garment racks. Tie the bungees to those and hang your clips from that. So like I always say, if it makes it easier, if it makes quilting more enjoyable, definitely do it. Don't let your machine tell you what to do. It's not in charge. So if it's having any kind of trouble, give it a good look through. Um, check, make sure your thread is threaded properly in your top as well as in your bobbin. Check for any lint. That's the biggest thing that can really gum up and muddy your machine when you're quilting. Um, as well as making sure that when you're quilting, if you hear that needle going fast, you just gotta ignore it and go with the flow and try to find a good stitch length that works for you that you like. I don't think that there's necessarily a right or wrong for um, if your stitches are too long or too small, um, aside from the difficulty with picking them out if they're too small or if they're too big, um, they could catch on a number of things um, and pull and break. So you just gotta find a good thread uh, width that works for you, a good stitch length. So this is a free YouTube video. Definitely visit me on my YouTube channel and subscribe if you wanna get the new videos as they come out. We'll be doing a lot of new videos this coming year. Um, as well as all of the links are gonna be in the description of this video. So if you wanna see what I'm up to on Facebook, and then there's also Instagram at Bold Notion Quilting. Uh, my YouTube channel is called Bold Notion Quilting as well. Um, all the links are in the description. And then of course, we just launched our boldnotionquilting.com uh, webpage, which I'm super excited about. There's classes on there. You can check back uh, monthly for new classes that'll be coming out. I got a lot of things in the works for getting the classes out. So we've got a tutorials page, some different tutorials for free motion designs and how to get your rulers to work better for you. Um, as well as there's a gallery on there and a shop. So I just started selling different kinds of notions. I carry glide thread. Um, right now there's a plethora of types of glide thread on there. I think we get so used to quilting with our one kind of thread, we get kind of terrified to use anything else. And I'm here to urge you to be bold and to try something new. So I've ordered all different kinds of glide thread. There's cotton, there's poly, there's poly spun, which is a matte poly and it looks like a cotton. Um, there's a poly core wrapped cotton, which is a stronger version of cotton, um, et cetera. There are so many different kinds on there. You can go and take, it, take a look and see which ones that you might like to try out. Um, and then as well as rulers, batting and then different kinds of Riley Blake fabric. So go at, go on to boldnotionquilting.com and give it a look. Uh, we do have classes like this. This is our Simply Gorgeous uh, Free Motion Quilt Along. She is one of a series of two panels and what we do is I walk you through um, all the different elements of doing a quilt from start to finish. So you're going to learn about the free motion designs. I'm gonna walk you through how to mark the quilt to get the designs in the place that they should be. Um, how to work your way around the free motion aspects and how to place them and why I place them where I place them. Um, and then you'll watch me stitch them as well. So you participate in this free motion quilt along from start to finish. You don't have to buy the panel. If you wanna take the class and, and just learn the different techniques and participate, you can still get a ton of information that way. Uh, but there are three panels left on my, um, on my webpage. Um, simply send me, contact me on boldnotionquilting.com, send me an email, um, and I will give you a link for where you can pick up some more panels. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that this information was helpful and it will aid you in your quilting going forward. Um, if you like the information and you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it on Facebook, your different pages and quilting groups. Spread the word, help people uh, learn how to um, shorten the learning curve for quilting. Let's take some of that learning curve out of there so that people can feel more comfortable, more confident and happier when they're quilting. And share that information and get it out there and make it easier for others. So thank you so much, have a great day and happy quilting.